This is Sarah Mikesell with The Pig Site, and today we're online with Peter Langendijk. He is a senior research scientist at Trow Nutrition. Peter has worked with Trow for seven years, focusing on sow R&D, looking at how nutrition can improve sow performance. Prior to his work at uh, Trow Nutrition, he conducted sow research in Australia at a public R&D institute. Thanks for being with us today, Peter. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Very good. And let's talk a little bit today about farrowing and how producers can help um, manage sows that are having, you know, farrowing through these really large litters that we're seeing today. So um, let's start with a, a question here that I have is, what are some of the issues that come up during the farrowing process? Yeah, okay. Um, so some genetics today um, may farrow up to 18 to 20 piglets. Um, if you go back, say, 20 years, um, gen in general, sows would farrow, say, 10 to 12 piglets. So uh, we've got an increase, a tremendous increase in litter size in, in say, 20 years. Uh, back then, uh, sows would take maybe two, three hours to farrow those to 12 piglets. Uh, whereas nowadays, uh, sows may need much more, say, six to eight hours to farrow a litter of 18 to 20 piglets. And time is everything uh, when it comes to farrowing uh, and successful farrowing. Um, the reason is that um, to, to give birth to piglets, um, sows will, um, the, the uterus in the sow will contract. And these contractions, they serve to push out the piglets uh, from the uterine horns, mm -hmm. uh, where they are situated during pregnancy, out through the uh, cervix. Um, so if a sow needs to push out 18 to 20 piglets, this simply takes more time. Um, and those contractions, they sort of travel uh, along the uterine horns uh, from the oviductal end towards the cervix. And by doing that, they push out uh, the piglets. Um, so the first, say, 10 to 12 piglets uh, will experience exactly the same as um, 10 to 12 piglets uh, in a litter born 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but the piglets that are born after number 12, um, they will have a different experience than those first uh, 10, 12 piglets in that they uh, experience much, many more contractions uh, than those first 10 piglets. And the problem with these contractions is that uh, they are okay to push out piglets, but at the same time, um, they compress the placenta that's uh, delivering blood to, and oxygen to the piglet. So um, if you are a piglet in that second part of the litter, um, you'll be experiencing a lot of those contractions throughout the process of farrowing. And every time a contraction passes uh, the uterine horn um, at the spot where you are situated as a piglet, um, blood flow, oxygen supply um, to the piglet will be compromised uh, for, for a certain amount of time. Um, so if this takes six to eight hours rather than two, three hours in the past, you can imagine that um, there's going to be effects on the piglets in terms of uh, oxygen deficiency. And um, to cut a long, uh, a long story short, ultimately this will uh, compromise the viability of piglets when they're born and, and can also end up in a piglet being stillborn. So that really is the issue, the time that it takes uh, sows to farrow these large uh, litters. When should a producer or staff, farm staff intervene in the farrowing process to help these sows along? Uh, again, time is everything here. Um, if you look at protocols, farrowing protocols um, that you see around, um, they'll generally say that after a certain amount of time between two piglets, um, you need to start um, intervening um, either by uh, sleeping is what they call it or arming or palpating a sow to see whether there's a piglet obs obstructed or anything uh, like that. And normally these protocols will say something like if there's more than 20 or 30 minutes between two piglets, then you need to start worrying about that next piglet. Um, and we've looked into a large data set um, to analyze whether this is really the case. And um, in fact, if you look at that interval between two piglets, uh, it doesn't say much about the risk of the next piglet being born dead or being compromised. Um, 
whether it's uh, 30 minutes between two pickets or 30 to 60 or even 60 to 90 minutes. Um, in our analysis, that didn't make much difference in terms of percentage of piglets stillborn. It was only after uh, when there was more than 90 minutes between two piglets, that's when there was an increase in risk of, uh, for stillbirth. Um, but that affects only a very small percentage of all piglets. Um, but looking at, at that data set that we had, um, it was more the cumulative, the total time that SR was farrowing for that really affected um, uh, the, the risk of piglets being stillborn. So if, if a piglet is born within the first two hours of the farrowing process, the risk um, is relatively low, whereas you know, every hour that's, ad that's added to the farrowing process adds a risk um, to, uh, for a piglet to be stillborn. Um, so, and, that, and that makes sense because it also explains why a sow that's farrowing for six to eight hours has more stillborn piglets than, than one right. that's failing for two to three hours. Um, and and this, this, in fact, also affects how you should um, go about intervening in the farrowing process. It really says that um, looking at intervals between two piglets doesn't make uh, much sense. You should more look at uh, how long the sow has been uh, farrowing for in total. Um, so if she's been farrowing for, say, two, three hours, I wouldn't worry, worry too much, um, you know, unless there's obvious signs of discomfort, distress, um, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, if the sow is faring for, say, three to four hours, um, you may start to uh, consider intervening when there is a long interval, say, more than an hour between two piglets, you know, and um, if the sow is faring for even longer, say, more than uh, uh, five, six hours, um, that interval may become a bit more critical. Maybe you'll start uh, considering to intervene um, within 45 minutes from the previous piglet. Um, so it's really about uh, being patient. And I, I say all the time, consider to intervene. You, you shouldn't necessarily intervene when a sow is faring uh, for more than four hours. You should rather consider it and looking at other signs uh, of distress, etc. Um, so it's all about uh, patience, uh, time, looking at time. So you need to record and uh, the time that the sow has been farrowing for, uh, that kind of thing, yes. So, so you've talked about uh, patience and time. And what other tips do you have? What should a producer not do necessarily uh, in this situation? Because you are talking about patience. You got to let the process happen, right? Are there any other tips that you want to share? Um, for sure, you should um, avoid using too much uh, palpation, as I just um, explained. Um, so it's better to refrain um, than to jump in and uh, want to do something all the time. Um, it's contraintuitive, contra I know that. Uh, people like to do something when they think there needs something to be, there's nothing, something that needs to be done, but sometimes it's better to refrain. Um, so my first tip would be sometimes just don't do it. <laughs> uh, it's better for the sow um, because palpating a sow is, is a form of stress uh, to the sow. And this uh, stress may uh, inhibit or reduce oxytocin release in the sow. And okay. the uh, oxytocin is uh, responsible for uterine contractions. Um, so palpation may uh, uh, inhibit that uh, process. Um, the other tip uh, I would give is um, uh, when a sow needs uh, intervention and you have um, established that maybe she has weak contractions, uh, a therapy could be to inject oxytocin. Mm -hmm. But what you often see is that people inject too much oxytocin. Um, oxytocin will drive contractions and it will certainly speed up the farrowing process. But at the same time, it will um, you know, uh, strengthen those contractions squeeze the placenta, inhibit blood flow and oxygen supply to the piglets, and in that way compromise the viability of the piglets. So the next tip is, if you use oxytocin, um, don't use too much. Um, I would say max five to 10 uh, international units. Uh, don't go above that because you'll speed up the process, but you'll probably end up having more uh, stillborn uh, piglets. Yeah. Very good. Any other tips you want to add? 
Um, what you could do is, uh, if you are monitoring piglets anyway, because you are monitoring the time um, that the sow is faring for, um, you could do things as drying piglets that are being born, uh, placing them under heat lamps that will increase okay. their um, survival rates. Um, another tip is to record the time that the sow needs to farrow the first, say, four or five piglets. Because mm -hmm. um, in general, the time uh, that, the f that the sow takes to farrow the f first piglets is predictive of the total time. Okay. So if you know the first four piglets already take long to farrow, then you know that sow will need to, uh, longer to farrow the rest of the litter as well. So that's something you could record as a, as a predictor. Um, that you know that the sow may need more attention than other sows in the in the farrowing room. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for all the information today. Thanks for having me, Sarah. This is Sarah Mikesell with the Pig Site. Mm -hmm.